talked about increasing, decreasing functions in the first derivative test. So pretty much, I'm just going to go through and tell you the most obvious things you've ever seen in your entire life as we're going through graphs for this. Okay? So on this graph right here, this is increasing on which intervals? We, ha we have points A, B, C, and D. When is this increasing? It's go going from A to B. Is that the only one that's increasing on? No. C to D. When is this decreasing? All right. Be cool. All right. Go calculus. Woo! All right. The increasing, decreasing test. It's really just making a sign chart. I don't know why they call it test. It's just sign chart and read it, or look at a graph and read it. So this is the graph of f prime. This is f prime. Identify when the original f is increasing. So I know what you're thinking right now f is increasing. You're like, oh, it's increasing from negative 2 to 2, right? Well, that's f. Is this the graph of f? No. no this is f prime. Okay. So, f is increasing when f prime of x is positive. This trips people up all the time. Like, right now you're good, but then you'll, you'll see it, like, in a week, and you'll be like, whoa, what just happened? So here's the graph of f prime. When is f prime positive? So negative infinity until. What else is it positive? Zero four. Anything else? And four to infinity. And again, if it asks you for justification, which justification can be for decreasing? So this is negative. So you have some questions where justify why it's increasing. F prime positive. <laughs> justify when it's decreasing. F prime negative. That's it. Don't write me sentences. All right, well, when I first looked at the graph, this is what I got. And then in this special circumstance, no, F prime increasing is what I care about. Okay. So we're going to go through. So this one is not a graph. It's a function. Well, I know we can graph it, but... Some of us can graph it. But let's go through, and I'm going to tell you if it's increasing or decreasing. This is kind of the steps up here. You need to find critical values so you can make a sign chart. Okay? This is not absolute extrema. This is not on an interval. This is just when is there a hill, when is there a valley. When is, do we have a maximum, when do we have a minimum? Okay? So we need to find F prime. When in doubt, in calculus. So the first half of calculus, just start taking derivatives. If you're lost, just take a derivative. If you're still lost, probably set it equal to zero, giving you a heads up on how calculus works. So, step one, take a derivative. Well, what is f prime? Three x squared minus three x. Be cool? Set it equal to zero, so I can get my, find my critical point. So what's my GCF? 3x, what's left on the in inside? x minus 1 <coughs> equals 0. So set these equal to 0. What are my critical points? 1 and 0. So I'm going to have critical points. So CP, I don't know, numbers, I don't care about points. So critical numbers are going to be x equals 0 and 1. Not points. Points are actually coordinate points. I don't really care about the coordinate points right now. I'm just finding when it's increasing or decreasing. So I'm going to make a sign chart. What two points need to be on here? Zero and one. So I just put little dashes. Zero and one. Got it. I probably do this in other teachers, uh, just with everything with the sign chart. I try to put a lot of information in the sign chart, so all you need is a sign chart to, to answer every single question you need. Okay? So, I need to find out, and this is of F prime. So people want to plug stuff back into the original. No, I want to know when F prime is increasing. 
or when it's positive. When f prime is positive, then f is increasing. That's all I care about. So if I plug in a number that's less than a zero, so come back up to here. It's usually easier to plug in the factored form. What's the number that's less than zero? Negative one. Plug in a negative one, and you're going to get negative, negative, which is? So you're going to get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Plug in a number that is between 0 and 1. 1 half. You're going to get positive times a negative, which is a negative. Plug in a number bigger than 1. 2. Positive, positive. So this is going to be positive. Yes? I was just going to mention that. Uh, this one is because it's a polynomial with non-repeating, uh, this is non-repeating zeros. Uh, you're going to start to have ln of x's and e v x's and sines and cosines. And, like, just, just weird stuff. So I wouldn't rely on that. Good try on the shortcut. If you know it's a polynomial, it's not repeating stuff, do it. I don't care. That's what I would do. Okay, so since this is positive, I usually just draw little arrows. So this is going up, this is going down, this is going up. That kind of helps me visually. So when is this increasing? Negative infinity to zero. Anything else? One to infinity. Justify it because f prime is positive. That's all you need. Full credit. Don't write me a story. When is this decreasing? Zero to one because f prime is Negative. I can't spell, but it's there. Okay, this, I just want to go over some more stuff this could tell you. You can actually find a local max. Because I'm going to have a local max at zero. Because I'm increasing, then decreasing. I'm going to have a local min at... 1, because I am decreasing then increasing. That's why I draw those arrows. They're not necessary, but they're helpful. A sign chart is not justification. On the AP, you will not get credit for a sign chart. You will only get credit for saying these things over here. Sign charts to help you, not to justify your work. Okay. So, first derivative test, I literally just talked about that in less words than this thing does, all right? It's a max if we go from increasing to decreasing, and it's a min if we go from decreasing to increasing. That's it, all right? I don't know why I have to write paragraphs and paragraphs. So find the relative extrema of this one, which is number two, which is right above. So we're gonna kinda continue this problem. We're exactly going to continue this problem, okay? So I have already done all the work. So what's the, what's the uh, max value at? X equals what? I have x equals 0. Well, what is f of 0? Plug up the, this one you need the original, because you need the coordinate point. It wants the extrema, and it wants the point. So this is when you want the point. P plug it back into the original. Well, actually, the original is right here as well. So when you plug in a 0, you're going to get 0. And this is a max or a min. So this is going to be a relative max, REL max works, or local max, I don't care. Uh, relative max at zero zero because f prime changes from positive to negative. Let's find out the information for the min. So I have x equals one. So what is f of one? Plug it back in. 1 minus 
three halves. Negative one half. So we're gonna have a relative min at one comma negative one half because f prime changes from negative to positive. Okay. I'm a minimalist. I'm giving you the the bare minimums here. Okay. I appreciate it if you're also a minimalist. Don't be running too much. It also takes away your precious time on your assessment. <coughs> I don't have to do both these examples. It just gets repetitive. So which one do you want to do? Do you want to do the one with trig or the one that has a hidden little nugget down here? Okay. No hidden nugget? I'll do trig. <laughs> do both fine. They're all extrema. So what's the first thing you do in calculus? Derivative. What is derivative of S? And then we do. Okay, so move that cosine over. So one half equals cosine of x. What does cosine equal one half? An infinite amount of times, right? But this restricts us, so that's kind of nice. It has to be between zero and two pi. So when does cosine equal one half? Okay, so it's pi over three. We're, we're confident in that? Okay. And it's going to be 5 pi over 3. We're confident in that? Yeah. What quadrants are those in? 1 and 4. One and four. You need to know trig. You need to know trig. So x is going to equal pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. If you're totally lost, I don't know, go to Khan Academy and type in trig and watch the 5 hours of footage that you can possibly watch. There's more than five hours. I was being generous. That's unit one. There's probably like four or five units. Back when I taught pre-calculus, back in the day, like two years ago, we had like five. Yeah, but I... Yeah. I forget. I don't like to talk about it. It's embarrassing, okay? Way below me way below me. I'm from teaching Calc 3, the pre-calculus. <laughs> Never. <laughs> How am I going to edit this? I have not seen any, there's not been enough international views to trigger the analytics, because I, I was looking at it. There's not been enough because if like one person watches it from like an unknown place, I don't, it just doesn't trigger the analytics. But if you get a couple, it'll trigger it. I'm sure that's what happened. I'm sure it was my students at Highland Park that were on VPNs that was watching it. I had some. I mean, I had some pretty. Devi I'll call them devious, devious children, over there. When we're not recording, I can give you more info. <laughs> Okay, so these are your critical values. So I'm going to make my sign chart. Actually, I'm not going to do arrows. Why am I not going to do arrows? This is different. Because I'm restricted from 0 to 2 pi. So what are my two critical values? Pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And this is F prime. So let's plug in a value that's less than pi over 3, like pi over 6. Going back to here, before we set it equal to 0, if I plug in a pi over 6, am I going to be positive or am I going to be negative? What is cosine of pi over 6? It is not 1 half nearly, otherwise that would be a critical point. It's root 3 over 2. One half minus root three over two. Is that positive or negative? Negative. 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 
Now, is this one going to be alternating? Let's use our brain a little bit. Why do we think it's going to be alternating? <laughs> because it's cosine. It oscillates. <laughs> Let's just do it for giggles, though. Hey, what's the number? What's what's between uh, pi over three and five pi over three? Pi is probably the easiest one to pick. <laughs> what's cosine of pi? What's cosine of pi? Negative one. What's one half minus negative one? All right. For those of you that are struggling, I do have videos that I, because I, I haven't taught pre I have not taught trig yet at this school for pre calculus. Right, at Highland Park, we do it in the first semester, like literally the whole semester. So I have from August to December of video notes that you can look at. Type in my name into YouTube. There's one that's all caps. That's my first go on. There's one that's all lowercase. That's currently like, I might be in the dark web for all I know at this moment because my account's been deleted. I think it's still there though. And you can just check out all those fun trig videos. You're probably wondering to yourself, does he insult them too? The answer is yes. <laughs> Except one year I had like a co-teacher in my room. I couldn't be as mean, so it got boring. Okay, and then plug in a value that's bigger than 5 pi over 3. This is kind of tough to find. But we know it oscillates, so we're good? It would be 11 pi over 6, by the way. You'd plug in 11 pi over 6. When you plug in 11 pi over 6, you're going to get 1 half minus root 3 over 2, which is negative so I have down, up, down. Okay, so what's my min's, what's my max? So let's go relative max. I have relative max at what? 5 pi over 3 comma. I need to figure that out. Stop talking. 5 pi over 3, comma, got to figure that out. How can I figure that out? Plug it in where? First function. Fine. So what is f of 5 pi over 3? Well, isn't that 5 pi over 6 minus what sine of 5 pi over 3? Is it positive or negative? Fourth quadrant. Negative. 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 What's the reference angle? <laughs> Re reference angle is pi over 3. And it's negative. So what's sine of pi over 3? <laughs> root 3 over 2, so it's going to be negative root 3 over 2. So it's negative, so it's plus root 3 over 2. I didn't make my parentheses big enough, so that goes in here. I'll squeeze it in there. <coughs> 5 pi plus root 3 all over... Oh, wait, no. Darn, gosh darn it. This should be over 6. And that should be plus over 2. Want me to rewrite this? Mm. Yeah, you can make it as one fraction if you want. You just got to make that 3 root 3. But I'll keep it separate because it doesn't matter. Because F prime changes from what to what? Positive to negative. That's relative max. And then let's do the relative min. I'll put it right here. So the rel min... At what x value is it? It's pi over 3, comma. Kind of plug it back in. So it's going to be pi over 6 minus. We just talked about it. Because f prime changes from negative to positive. All right, 
try five on your own. Because you wanted to do it. It's fine. Try five on your own. I'll try to go through it like super fast. Neil, should you just say chain roll? I'm so proud of you. Neil, you're moving up on the list. What kind of motivation is that? <laughs> Ali is so upset that he's the, my last one on my list that his grades have been skyrocketing since I told him this. And he's wondering why he's not higher. Well, if I put him at number one, his grade will no longer skyrocket. I get guys somewhere to keep reaching for. Does that mean Gabe's on top? I'm on video. I'm not, I'm not saying who's on top. <laughs> it's on video. Okay, it's called motivation through spite. There are two of the great motivators in life. One of them is spite. Yeah, like that's not me. I don't say that. You're all terrible. You're gonna lose. Oh man, we lost. Spite didn't work. Is my derivative correct? All right, can I talk, start talking? Derivative is correct, right? We're good? Okay, so how do you get critical points? There was one way we neglected to talk about it. I didn't think, I didn't even think in the last video. It doesn't really mention. Set the derivative equal to zero. That gives you critical points or where it's undefined. Where is this undefined? The bottom. So you can also set the bottom equal to zero. So you can set the top equal to zero and the bottom equal to zero. Okay? Top equal to zero, bottom equal to zero. It really helps if you know how to clean this up. If you don't know how to clean this up, you're going to have a bad time. So when I clean this up, when I set the top equal to zero, what's, my, what's one of my critical numbers? I'm going to get zero. So I'm going to get x equals zero. So at the bottom equal to zero, what am I going to get? Two and negative two. Do my sign chart. So I'm going to get negative two, zero, and two. Is negative two and two, is it defined in the original? You plug those in and get a finite. Yeah, you get zero. You're fine. But it's not defined here in the derivative. That means it's got a vertical tangent. Ooh, vertical tangent. How fun. Okay, uh, let's go through this now. Left of negative two would be negative three. Uh, plug in a negative three into the top here. You're gonna get negative all over negative three squared. 9 minus 4, which is positive. So you have negative over positive, which is? Negative. negative. I'm doing all this work in my head. You don't have to do all this work in your head. Plug in a negative 1. On top, you're going to get a negative. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 4, which is? Negative. Is the cube root going to change that negative? No. So it's negative over negative, which is? This is going to end up alternating. Yeah, it is. It's not going to bother anything. Uh, so then, plug in a 1, you're going to get positive over negative, which is... Plug in a, a 3, which is positive over... Positive. 
Okay, so it wants to know increasing, decreasing, and all relative extrema. So, let's go with it right now. When's this bad boy increasing? Negative 2 to 0. And? Because? F prime is positive. Was it decreasing? Negative infinity to negative 2. And 0 to 2 because? Relative max at zero comma. Can we plug that back in real quick? What's zero squared? Zero. Minus four. Oh gosh darn it. What's what's negative four two squared first? What's negative four squared? Cube root of sixteen. Don't really care, right? Cube root of sixteen? Cube root of sixteen. Because F prime changes from positive to negative. And we're going to get a relative min at... Ooh, how many of these do we have? Ooh, that's so fun. Okay. Negative 2 comma? Back in the original. Zero. And... Two comma zero. zero because F prime changes from negative to positive. If you're ever wondering how could justify this stuff, just look back at this problem. It's got it all. Super quick, super clear, hopefully, and we're good to go. Okay? Hey, that's everything we need about first derivatives that we care about. Who wants to move on to the second derivatives? <laughs> Who groaned? <laughs> Get out of here. The entire class? No. No. Okay, let's talk about concavity. It's kind of a weird idea. Okay, concave up is when the positive slope is getting even more positive or the negative slope is getting even more negative, which means it's, it's decreasing, right? So concave up is when, again, when the derivative, positive derivative is increasing and the negative derivative is decreasing. Okay, it looks like this. This is concave up. How do I know that's concave up? What's a fun little way we think we can remember this? It looks like a U. Wow, they didn't need to teach you that in, in teaching school. <laughs> concave down is when we're decreasing at a increasing rate, and we're increasing at a decreasing rate. Looks like this. Huh, what does that look like? A lowercase n for down. No. Uh. <laughs> uh, kids these days. All right, uh, real quick, let me just talk about some of these. This is not very clearly labeled because, you know, the notes, I always hate them. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you for a fact, concavity changes there. I can just tell. So it's concave down, then it goes concave up, and then it's going to change again probably right about here-ish. I'm just picking nice points so that we can actually have nice points to work with. Uh, so it's concave down, and then it changes like right here. And then it's concave up, and then it'll just say it changes right here, and then it's concave down the rest of the way. Okay, so in what intervals is it concave up? It's kind of hard to read. Negative 3 until... Wait, no, that's not even negative 3. What the heck is wrong with this graph? That's 1. That's 
Yeah, negative three point five. Aye. Negative three point five until negative two. When is it also is it concave up? Negative one to zero, and that's it. When's it concave down? And then negative two to negative one, and zero to infinity. So it's important to know that concavity is when our...